Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about literature reviews, and more specifically, literature reviews as research, as opposed to literature reviews as background. So let's get started. We all know literature reviews play a critical role in scholarship. We understand that science is a cumulative endeavor, and that literature reviews are essential for identifying what's been written on a subject. In addition, literature reviews can help us, one, determine the extent to which a research area reveals trends or patterns, two, aggregate empirical findings related to a research question, three, generate new frameworks and theories, and four, identify topics or questions requiring more investigation. Now, somewhat confusingly, literature reviews come in two forms, literature reviews as background and literature reviews as research. So let's talk a little bit about the differences. A literature review as background is what most of us commonly think of when we think of a literature review. It's a review or background section in a larger piece of writing, such as a journal article or a dissertation. Some of the aims of this kind of literature include synthesizing existing literature, identifying gaps in knowledge, providing a theoretical foundation, substantiating the presence of the research problem, justifying the research as contributing something new, and validating the methods and approaches for the proposed study. We're all used to literature reviews as background because the empirical articles we've been reading this semester have most likely included them. Now, the other form of literature review is the literature review as research. This is a literature review that's a journal-length paper which aims to synthesize the literature in a field without collecting or analyzing any primary data. These are often referred to as review articles. Now, here are some characteristics of literature reviews as research. They typically constitute original and valuable work in and of themselves. They're often cited and downloaded more often than other types of published research and they tend to create a great starting point for anyone interested in the review's topic area. And they represent powerful information sources for practitioners looking for state-of-the-art evidence. So how might we position literature reviews as research within the layers of the research onion? Well, in terms of methodological choice, literature reviews, as we'll see, can be qualitative or quantitative in nature. And they're considered monomethods. Moving in a layer to research strategies, literature reviews should sit right alongside other strategies, such as experiments, case studies, and ethnographies. The steps involved in conducting a review article are pretty straightforward. They start out by formulating research questions and objectives. From there, a search is conducted to find existing literature, and depending on the topic and the type of review, this can result in hundreds or even thousands of potential candidate articles. Next, the articles are screened based on some predetermined inclusion and exclusion criteria. The goal is to assess the quality of those candidate articles and select the ones that are most relevant. The remaining articles, the ones that haven't been discarded, are read closely to extract data of interest. And finally, the extracted data is then analyzed for patterns or trends. Interestingly, there are a number of different types of review articles. Narrative reviews, descriptive reviews, scoping reviews, systematic reviews, realist reviews, and critical reviews. So let's learn a bit more about each type of review. A narrative review is a literature review aiming to summarize or synthesize what has been written on a particular topic. Some characteristics of narrative reviews include that they tend to accumulate and synthesize literature to demonstrate the value of a particular point of view. In other words, they're subjective, and they try to provide readers with a comprehensive background on some particular topic. Narrative reviews often identify gaps or inconsistencies, and they can be used as educational articles to bring folks up to speed. Finally, they tend to be skewed more towards qualitative interpretation. Next up, we have descriptive reviews, which are sometimes referred to as mapping reviews. 
These kinds of reviews aim to determine the extent to which a body of knowledge about a topic reveals any interpretable patterns or trends with respect to pre-existing propositions, theories, methodologies, or findings. In terms of characteristics, descriptive reviews follow systematic and transparent procedures. They use structured search methods to form a representative sample of articles, and then they extract key characteristics such as year of publication, target audience, or research method used. In the end, they provide a sort of database from which the authors attempt to identify trends or draw conclusions about existing knowledge. Next up, we have scoping reviews. These are literature reviews aiming to provide an initial indication of the potential size and nature of the existing literature on an emergent topic. Characteristics of scoping reviews include examining the range and nature of research in a particular area, and these types of reviews aim to be as comprehensive as possible, and they tend to specify inclusion and exclusion criteria to help researchers eliminate irrelevant studies. Finally, scoping reviews usually have a conclusion that provides a detailed research agenda for future work. Next up, we have systematic reviews. These are literature reviews aiming to aggregate and synthesize all empirical evidence to answer a clearly formulated research question. Systematic reviews seek to identify causation, and they adhere closely to scientific principles and methodological guidelines. They try to reduce random and systematic errors that can lead to deviations from the truth. And generally speaking, systematic reviews aggregate a large body of research evidence to assess whether effects or relationships are in the same direction and of the same general magnitude. Systematic reviews are known as meta-analyses when they use statistical methods to combine the results of independent studies together into a single quantitative estimate. In contrast, systematic reviews can be qualitative when they bring together primarily qualitative studies. Such reviews are referred to as qualitative systematic reviews, and they draw on qualitative synthesis methods. This brings us to our next type of literature review, which is a realist review. A realist review aims to inform, enhance, or supplement conventional reviews by making sense of heterogeneous evidence about interventions applied in diverse contexts. This type of review originated from criticisms of positivist systematic reviews, which tend to have simplistic underlying assumptions. In contrast, realist reviews don't try to establish causal links, and they try to understand how complex interventions work in particular contexts. They often ask, what is it about this intervention that works, and for whom, and in what circumstances, in what respects, and why? Realist reviews view primary studies as case studies. The final category of literature review as research are critical reviews. These are literature reviews aiming to provide a critical evaluation and interpretive analysis of existing literature on a topic in order to review possible strengths, weaknesses, contradictions, or controversies, and so on. In terms of characteristics, critical reviews attempt to take a reflective account of research done in a particular area. They assess the credibility of existing research using appraisal instruments or critical interpretive methods. They inform, hopefully constructively, other scholars about the weaknesses of prior research. And they tend to strengthen knowledge development by giving focus and direction to future studies. Now, what about reliability and validity in the context of literature reviews as research? Well, let's talk a little bit about reliability first. In the context of review articles, reliability is defined as reproducibility of the process and steps. This is facilitated by comprehensive documentations of all steps in the process, search, extraction, coding, and analysis. And the more explicit and transparent that documentation is, the better. Validity is defined as the degree to which the review process was conducted appropriately. In this context, validity reflects decisions related to the selection of sources, the search terms used, the period of time covered, 
the articles selected, and the application of backward and forward searches. In addition, review validity emphasizes the explicitness and soundness of the methods used. So, just like any other research strategy we might consider using, reliability and validity are important topics that need to be addressed in literature reviews as research. So there you have it, a brief overview of literature reviews as research, yet another research strategy we can keep in our methodological toolbox. Thanks for watching.